Hi, I'm Lisa Eldridge, and this is Vogue Visionaries. I'm a professional makeup artist and I've been working for over 25 years. I launched a YouTube channel about 11 years ago. I've made a documentary series about the history of makeup. I've launched my own makeup brand and I've designed so many makeup products over the years. We're going to be covering how to get started in the industry. Some of my kit essentials, being a digital creator today, as well, of course, as lots of beauty tips and some of the key lessons I've learned along the way. This class is in five chapters, so you can use the time bar below to skip to any chapter you want. I first got interested in makeup when I was about six years old. I found an old bag of makeup that belonged to my mother when she was a teenager, and Although I knew that she used makeup then and I'd seen her modern makeup, I was just so fascinated by this old makeup bag. And I just loved all of the textures, the colors, the gloopiness, the metallic creams, the packaging. And I just decided then that it was way more exciting than regular crayons. So I started drawing faces and using the makeup. I suppose I was creating face charts, but I wouldn't have known that back then. I didn't really used to use a lot of makeup as a teenager, but I did used to do this thing, which was when I got home from school and I was like 13, 14, there was about an hour where I'd be home alone. And I used to get my mum's makeup and do myself up as a silent movie star or a Hollywood 1940s starlet and then wash it all off. And then by the time my mum came home, I had no makeup on and I was doing my homework. When I first decided I wanted to be a makeup artist, you know, I was living in Liverpool, I was about to leave school. No one was really, could give me any advice. And I loved fashion magazines. I used to buy Vogue with my pocket money and I used to really loved the idea of working on fashion shoots, but I didn't know anyone in the industry, no one could help me. I just thought, well, I'll just get to London and I'll figure it out when I get there. When I first got to London, I just needed to make money, so I did all kinds of jobs. I worked on makeup counters, which was amazing actually, because I got to get my kit together with the allowance that they would give you, but also I got to practice makeup on lots of different people. And then at weekends, I was always testing. I went and just contacted all the model agencies in London. And I was like, if you need a good makeup artist or you're testing, then, you know, give me a call. Two top tips for getting started in makeup. One would be to put yourself out there, as scary as it is. You know, if you don't ask, you don't get. My other tip would be just keep doing makeup, whether it's your friends, your family. If you've got new ideas, practice them. Every time you do makeup on a face, you're learning something. Keep practicing makeup. So chapter two, kit essentials. My kit is always different for every single job. When the brushes are out, then I can start to kind of lay everything around the brushes. And then as I'm using them, I'll be putting them into pots. So if it's only one model, then I will just put them into maybe face, eyes, something like that, or lips. If there are multiple models on a shoot, then each model will get her own tub and I will put her name on it so that the brushes don't get used by different people. If you're doing kit on a budget, then I would suggest getting some brushes from an art store. These are just the dream brushes for doing all of that small and intricate work. Some kind of synthetic face brush is essential. You can buy these from all different brands. A fluffy blending brush. This is for eyes and it's completely essential. Even if you're doing your makeup and you're applying it all with your fingers, at the end you're gonna come, wanna come in and just blend everything out. So another absolute essential when setting up my station is my skincare. So everything I need to prep the model's face, things like face tools. As soon as I arrive on a job, these go straight into the fridge along with any face masks that I've brought. And it makes such a difference when you use cold tools, you really notice that the puffiness around the eyes and in the face really reduces. The next thing I'll put up is face cream and I'll put a selection of moisturizers for an oily skin, something more for a dry skin. Put a really good eye makeup remover in case you make any little mistakes or you have to tweak anything. I love face mists. They're just really good for hydrating the makeup throughout the day. Body lotion is really good. I bring kind of natural micellar water. 
I'll also take aromatherapy oils for energizing or relaxing. Cleaning brushes are so essential. For me, I prefer to wash them, always have them washed. I would only ever use an alcohol type of brush cleaner on a job when I needed a brush to be clean and um, I didn't have a backup for it. The rest of the time, I just like proper washing of brushes. The essential thing is going to be the Sigma glove. I could have easily a hundred brushes to wash at the end of a really big editorial shoot. This is just incredible because you can work the brushes into all the different shapes. It's not just an oven glove. It looks like something gimmicky, but it's absolutely brilliant. And it also has this thing where you can squeeze the um, the water out of the brushes and get them back into shape. And then to dry them, we just leave them hanging over the edge of something like this, a table like this with a towel on so that the air can get all around the brush. I use a mixture of um, washing up liquid. This is just great if you've got stubborn makeup. There are more gentle versions. This is a really nice one, which I discovered quite recently, and which is a natural brush soap. And this one smells really, really nice. Sometimes I'll give them like a, a conditioning baby shampoo, which will restore the softness of the brushes because it's so important that your brushes feel really nice. And I'm complimented all the time by clients and models to say, oh, your brushes feel so nice on my skin. I remember seeing YouTube for the first time and I was on a shoot and the editor said, have you seen these girls on YouTube in the bedroom talking about makeup? And I was like, no. And we went to um, the computer in the studio and we were watching this girl and I was like, this is punk. This is amazing. Oh my God, this is gonna change the makeup industry forever. And I thought, well, all the things that I get asked you know, from friends or from family about makeup, maybe I can do a video just explaining like some of the key tips that I've learned from being a makeup artist. So when it came to making my first video, I was quite concerned about how it should look because all of the people that I liked watching and following on YouTube were girls that weren't necessarily makeup artists. They were just regular girls and women in their bedrooms, putting on makeup and chatting. And I felt that would be a little bit inauthentic for me. Um, somehow, like I was pretending to be somebody that didn't spend my whole life doing makeup for people. So I thought, what's authentic to me? Where do I spend my time when I'm doing makeup? And I thought, well, I'm always in a makeup room, hair and makeup room of a studio. So I thought, well, I have a white backdrop. I'm very privileged that I'm a really good makeup artist or a top makeup artist. So if I look terrible, I know that I can make myself look good. So I'd like to teach people how to do that. So I did this video like morning after makeup and I was terrified. Like I was terrified of people in the industry um, looking down on me. And I remember saying back then, Five years from now, everyone will be their own makeup artist because they're all gonna learn how to do makeup on YouTube. And, um, and that definitely came true. My best performing videos tend to be no makeup makeup is a big one for me, but also some of the historical things I've done, like the best and worst makeup looks in history, the Marilyn Monroe look. The thing about editing is that, and I knew this from before I started YouTube, only you know what you want to have in the video. What are the key things? What are the messages? What are the things that you want people to take away from this video? And no one else knows that, only you. So unfortunately, whether you like it or not, and even if you can get someone to help you, you still have to sit with them to say, oh, that's the bit I want to leave in, and that's the bit that can probably come out. Working on a documentary series and working on YouTube are two completely different things. With YouTube, I do it in my own time, on a day that I feel in the mood for it, when I've got an idea, and I'm able to go through the whole process myself. I can check how it looks, I do all the editing, I do everything. And then working on a documentary is very different. I mean, I was lucky that I worked with a great production company, an amazing um, series producer that was fantastic, but it's very different. You're kind of, you know, whether you like it or not, you're on set, you're working, um, Maybe you're cold, you are um, in the rain, walking along and being photographed. And then also um, when it came to doing the makeup, 
again, I think I'm, you know, I get so spoiled from being in this industry and working with the best lighting people, the best of everything. And I think with beauty, particularly, um, people who work in, in fashion and beauty are very, very fussy about lighting and all kinds of stuff. So I think that that was, you know, me having to kind of let go a bit and be a bit more in the mindset of a documentary, which again, I think was quite good for me in some ways as well. Scary, but that's good. I've just finished creating this very natural, glowy, enhancing makeup look on Chia. And for chapter four, I'm gonna show you how I achieved it. So one of the key skills that you need as a makeup artist is just how to do a really good natural makeup. And it's a look which is involves a lot of makeup, it involves a lot of skill. And we have beautiful Chia here, who frankly is already perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I have started doing a little bit of base already. So I prepped Chia's skin using moisturizer. I did a little massage on her skin just to help with circulation. And what I'm just starting to do now is a little bit of correction. So for this, I would use a touch redder than her natural skin and I just used it around her mouth area. Now I'm just gonna do some base. So this is really just working into the skin. And I love that kind of really seamless look. So then moving on to a bit of foundation, I'm mean, going to use two different shades. I'm using this shade around the center of the face. And I'm just starting to really build quite a small amount of product. I don't use a lot of foundation when I'm doing this type of look. It's more about evening out the skin tone than anything else. Then I'm using this slightly deeper shade just to start to shade and shape. And always check the body skin that we have this kind of seamless synergy really between face and the neck and the body. I think a difficult skill to master is probably to get that feeling with foundation. Even if you're using quite a lot of concealer, or highlighter or all of the things you use to create the perfect base makeup but to have it so that it still looks natural even though it might be flawless and perfected and all of those things and to me personally it's about adding a small amount really blending and then adding more like I would never go in with uh, an awful lot of product at the beginning. I tend to build slowly. And for me, I find, particularly with a new client, that I'm able to see how their makeup, some people's faces kind of eat makeup and other people don't, it kind of sits on top. So it's really working with the skin to figure out how it's going to settle, how it's going to look, which is why I tend to do complexion in thin layers bit by bit and really blending each step. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to do some under eye brightening for lifting any shadows and it's also good for highlighting. A small sponge like this is just perfect for kind of bouncing the product into the skin. I love it when a product feels completely in synergy with the skin, particularly if it's something with quite a lot of coverage like this. And then I'm just doing some pinpoint concealing. This is worth time spent actually, sort of perfecting. I do it a bit like retouching the skin. Not that you need much of it. <laughs> For cream blush, I'm going to mix a touch of this with a little bit of this coral. If you're going for that really natural look, having a blush that just looks like it's coming from within, even if you're going to use powder blush later, at this stage, having some colour coming through is just so beautiful and natural looking. For eyes, I'm just doing a wash to start of something with a little bit of shine in. I like to keep really light brush strokes. I use two different powders. I use a little bit of this one around the center of the face and under the eyes. And then I use this MAC Pressed for the rest of the face. This is the first layer that is the basis of the makeup. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just put some black pencil through your lash line. So I'm just really massaging the roots of the lashes. This is a really good way to apply a liner. You can use a really strong cold pencil or stiff pencil just to really get into the lash roots. And then I'm gonna use a small brush just to blend that. 
And if you use a really soft pencil like this, you can use it just to lift up the outer edge. Now I'm just using a matte black shadow just to add a little bit more definition of the outer edges underneath. And I've used a little bit of a shadow just along those lower lashes, just blending it now. Curl the lashes and I'm using the Miss Your Big Waterproof, which is a really good mascara in black. I'm just going to do brows now. I'm going to use a pencil. I'm just going to do lots of really small strokes. I'm not aiming to make them any darker. I'm just going to really just fill in. I'm just going to put a few of these lashes on. I'm using this lip pencil, which is called Tailored by Vive. I'm going to use this color for the lips. And then I use the Affair Lip Gloss Embrace. And then I'll finish off with a little tiny bit of bronzer, a little bit more shaping. So the finished look is uh, a glowy makeup look, I'd say. It's natural, but it does have definition. So it's really just enhancing Chia's natural beauty. Well, a favorite look that I've done, I just, there are so many looks that I've done that I really like. So over the years, um, so I'll, maybe I'll choose a more recent one. I would say do a leaper for the Met Gala in 2019 and she was wearing Versace and we did this very kind of pulled up look and it was purple eyeliner, like a floating eyeliner. Two or three sets of false eyelashes, I forget, but really extended out. For that particular look with Dua, we, I actually went to her house about a week or so before the show and um, before the Met and tried out different looks in her house. So that was a real luxury because I had the time to try out different things. I took pictures and by the time we were all happy with the look, uh, yeah, I was very confident. So by the time I got to New York for the Met Gala, I knew what I was doing, but that's a luxury. My bonus tip for working with big talent is don't be intimidated. When you look at the person, online, you see the creation of someone that is not who you're going to meet. You're going to see the pictures of them in a movie or them on the red carpet. And that's after somebody like you has been and done their makeup and their hair and everything. You're going to open the door and it's just going to be a human being who's in slippers and a bit tired and hasn't got any makeup on. So I think that that is something that you need to remember, that you are connecting with just a regular person and you're there to make their day great, do great makeup, make them feel amazing. And um, for that reason, don't be intimidated. What I've learned now and what I'd like to tell my younger self is that if you don't ask, you don't get. I used to really stress out reaching out to people and although I used to do it, I didn't do enough of it and I think I could have probably saved myself a lot of time if I'd had more confidence to just suggest things and just reach out. Would I do anything differently? Not really. I think it was a process. Maybe I would say no to a few things couple more holidays maybe. One of the things I'm most proud of in my career is my probably my first British Vogue cover. I was so excited. I remember seeing it in the newsagent and walking in and walking past the shelf and being like, oh my God, this is incredible. Like pinch me, I can't believe this has happened. And then I remember like every time I saw a newsagent, I would go into the newsagent <laughs> for the whole month, just to see it on the shelf. And um, I just, yeah, it was a dream of mine to have it. And when I saw it and it was out, I was so proud and so excited. The three most important lessons I've learned throughout my career. Number one, stay curious. That's what you need, I think, in this industry to have a long career. You need to stay excited. Number two, as a freelancer, you win some, you lose some, you can't win them all. Don't get too depressed when you were up for a job, it didn't happen. Don't worry about any of that because in the long run, none of that matters. Number three, I do believe that you can have everything you want in life, but maybe not all at the same time. It takes time to build your career and it should do. It's like a river. It takes time to maintain and some days you might go off in other tangents or something will happen. But if you've got in your mind focus of the things you want to do, 
they're going to happen, maybe not at the same time you expected them to happen. So a certain amount of flexibility and inner belief somehow will help you to get through those times. I'm Lisa Eldridge and this has been my Vogue Visionaries. Thank you for watching.